Right here what you're seeing is I've actually drawn two shapes on the screen. I've drawn a square and an oval. Let's go ahead and examine that code right there and see if we can understand how it works. Once again, I'm using swing commands right here. And I'm bringing in the aught. So that's this you already understand very well. And at this point, what I need to do is I've created a class called drawing color. All right, that's what I've done. And here's my method, my main string args method that runs everything. And I'm, it, I'm from the constructor method, basic, I'm instantiating it, and I'm calling it color D. All right. And let's see what I have here. I have this drawing color, and it's right here. And basically what I'm doing is creating a J-frame with the name Drawing Alpha. And I'm just declaring a J-frame and call that name that is Frame. And then I have all these frame methods that I'm actually calling here. That's going to allow me to uh, basically add the component and uh, get the size and set the visibility. So what am I doing? I'm declaring this component, new component, which I'm going to be adding to J-frame, right? And uh, that new component is down here. And in that new component, I extend the J-component uh, swing class. Now, are you familiar with J component? What I would do is just roll over this right here, and when you do that, you should get some code hinting. Let's see if that comes up. It's not coming up for some reason now. I don't know why. But uh, basically, here it is. And basically, J component, let me bring that over here so you can look at it. Is if I can move that over, come on over for me. So J component really has a lot of, uh, it, it actually has a lot of methods in it that, that I'm extending here. They allow me to draw onto it. It has all the print draw methods in it, and it has a bunch of other stuff. So it can be, it's pretty much a generalized component. It can be used for lots and lots of cool stuff. And uh, so I'm just taking my component. I'm extending it as a J component so I don't have to, uh, you know, write all the code that's required to be able to draw to. All right? So you see, you'll see this often that people will extend so they can draw right into that J component. And so I'm just pretty much calling a paint method, and I'm using what's called graphics G, and you'll see that over and over again. I'm going to initiate the height and the width, and I'm going to set the color. Uh, that's, and I'm going to set the uh, draw rectangle, and that's just a standard method. You've already seen this. I'm going to set the color again, and I'm going to fill the rectangle. Then I'm going to set the color again, and I'm going to draw an oval, and I'm going to set the color again, and I'm going to draw a fill for the oval. And that's all there is to it. Welcome to Java. And you, you, you get this pretty well? It actually does have a constructor. Here's the constructor method right here. And you know it's a constructor because it has no return type. Okay, so I'm running the constructor right here. Okay. And when I run that constructor, what I'm doing is I'm throwing everything into the J-frame. And the J-frame calls this method, my component, which actually draws the uh, rectangle and the oval. And that was a good question. No, it doesn't have to. It just basically is one method calling another method, and that's it. Okay, so this wanted to just show you that, hey, here's this graphics method. I'm drawing onto the J component, calling the J component, and then calling that constructor, which actually is, sets it all in the frame. Pretty easy program. All right, and uh, let me see what else I have here, and that's what I want to show you. So we can go back here. And so there are just a ton, ton of, ton of uh, drawing uh, um Here's a, here, I just showed you the draw rectangle and the draw oval, but there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of drawing uh, uh, pieces. And here I put a little graphics uh, reference here. So I'm going to go and go to that real quick so you can actually look that up. And if you go to that, it's going to say displaying 2D graphics, and there have tons of stuff for you to look at. You can go to about learn about graphics and filling primitives if you want to do all that stuff, and it shows you all the different primitives and stuff. So just go to the, go to this site at your leisure, and you'll learn all about drawing 2D graphics. And there's lots of neat, neat, neat code here and things you can do. So make sure you go to this site and look at it. And there's shapes and texts and images. And he's got some really cool examples, I think, that he shows you how to do some cool stuff. So I, as opposed to me just stepping through all this code and you know just going through it, I don't need to because you can see that. Now, you may see the word clipping here. You know, when you can draw a, a graphic that's not on the screen, but it doesn't matter because Java knows to clip it and get rid of it, okay? So uh, it's got some clipping code, and when you get a 3D, clipping code becomes very important. So I'm not going to go into this anymore. You've got this code here. So I want you to just take a look at that site, and, you know, just anything you see that you need, suck, a, suck it out and write some code for it, and there's lots of code examples. I want to go back to a topic that I had not talked about to you previously, and it's one that you don't see very much in Java at all, but one I want you to talk here about because you're going to run into this as a coder. Garbage collection. Ta-da! 
we all know that garbage collection is extremely important, and so if your garbage was not collected for a few weeks, now, I got nine kids, so if you don't collect my <laughs> garbage for one week, we're in trouble. But uh, the thing about it is, is that computers have garbage as well. And what happens is, is when you declare a variable or you create a method, it actually claims some of the memory resources. Okay? And so what you want to do at the end of that program or when that resources are no longer needed, that you get rid of them. And if you don't and you keep claiming resources and claiming resources, you, you'll get more and more garbage, and that's called a memory leak. All right? Now, Java does a tremendous job of uh, garbage collection. You don't even recognize it. So what happens is is that it, when it has a variable and it sets it on the stage, it grabs the memory it needs to house that variable. You know, strict typing, that's what you were doing, setting the amount of memory that you would need for each one of those elements. It sets them up for you, and it knows. And it has code in there that looks for when it's not being used anymore. It takes it off the screen. So it removes it from your processor, and that memory is not being hogged anymore. So Java is extremely efficient in this, so efficient that we rarely talk about garbage collection in Java because it does such a good job. But other programs, such as Flash... Does a terrible job of memory collection, memory or garbage collection, and uh, it can actually get memory leaks. And so I actually uh, had a program at, uh, at my workplace, and we were looking at it, and uh, and they are just you know looking at, but they didn't have any like mechanisms to tell how much memory it was using. So I wrote a, wrote a code that looks at how much processor memory was being used and was tracking the frames per second as well. So it was a like a program optimization code. And as we move on, I can give this code to you as well. But I found out that that program was using 100 megabytes of memory, RAM memory, which is huge. And so we optimized it, and just with a few changes, we got it down to 11 megabytes of memory. But you didn't, unless you're measuring it, it's not there. You know, it's, so we actually had to get that mechanism on there, that code on there, to measure how much it was using. And it was, and it was, gar it was, boy, it was had no garbage collection. It was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's a memory leak for you. So you have to be careful about those memory leaks. And uh, but not when you program in Java. That's seldom an issue. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay.